Welcome to this video tutorial demonstrating how to use the powerful SAP List Viewer with Integrated Data Access, also known as ALV on HANA, based on the SAP NetWeaver Application Server ABAP 7.4 Service Package 5. Before starting with the system demonstration, I will surely explain the main differences between the classical ALV and ALV on HANA. Having SAP HANA as underlying database of SAP NetWeaver brings a paradigm shift in the development of ABAP-based applications. Data-intensive processing is to be delegated to the database layer. It is the so-called code-to-data paradigm. In this context, a new implementation of the ELV, which leverages the capabilities of in-memory databases such as SAP HANA, has been provided. The main difference between both reuse components, the classical ELV and ELV on HANA, is related to the data sent to the application server ABAP. When working with the classical ELV, the complete selected and event is sent to the application server. While with the ELV on HANA, only the displayed data is sent to the application server. In addition to that, with the classical ELV control, the processing of data-centric UI operations such as paging, aggregations, grouping and filtering is performed on the application server, while such processing is delegated to the database layer with the ELV on HANA. In short, with ELV on HANA, the result is retrieved much faster, the memory consumption in the application server ABAP is reduced, and the selected data is not truncated. You might still ask yourself, what does it mean? Well, with the integration of ALV on HANA in your Dune Pro-based and Floor Plan Manager-based applications, your end users now have the possibility to work on millions of untruncated records which have been processed in subseconds and with a minimal footprint on the application server ABAP. Let's now start with the system demonstration. We will use a core data services view retrieving the open invoices of business partners in this demo. The data source of this CDS view consists of inner joints of different database tables. The select list contains various elements with two of them marked as key columns and a where condition closes the view definition. Let's go to our demo report. We will start with a very simple one-liner to display the content of a DDX view or table with the ELV on HANA control in full screen mode. When using the classical ELV, an internal table with the selected data has to be transferred to the factory method. With ELV on HANA, only the name of the view is bound to the ELV control. Let's activate and run the report. The ELV on HANA control is displayed in a full screen grid. You can see a title area and below the toolbar with standard functions such as sorting, grouping, aggregate functions and Excel export. When browsing through the data, the ELV on HANA control sends a query to the database to get the data to be displayed. This is the database paging. Key columns have a special formatting. They have a specific background color and are fixed. End user can personalize the list layout by hiding and resizing columns or changing their position. Data-centric operations such as aggregations, filtering, sorting and grouping are pushed down to the database. This means that end users do not have to struggle with truncated lists since all these operations are always performed on the whole selected data in the database. For example, sorting and not finding the entry you expected or aggregating and getting questionable results. It is also important to know that the sorting on the database is a binary sort 
and not a lexical one as on the above tables. Let's go back to our demo report and see how to use the different ALV on HANA features. I have prepared some ABAP code templates for this purpose. First, I will insert a skeleton for the rest of the demo. We can see the decoration of our ALV on HANA control object, its instantiation and binding to the CDS view, then placeholder for the different steps to be shown in this demo, and at the end, the ELV on HANA grid control is displayed in full screen mode. Let's start with the handling of select options. We are defining a selection criterion for the business partner ID. A helper class is needed to collect the range tables. The returned collection is then bound to the ELV on HANA control. Only one range table is used in this example, but it could have been more. Complex conditions can also be created. In the next step, we are specifying the relevant table columns for our business scenario. What we are doing is first getting the list of fields using the field catalog interface, then removing the irrelevant column names. In this example, GUIDs are technical fields and should not be displayed. And then updating the field catalogs with the modified field list. You have surely noticed that I'm using the new concise ABAP syntax, which allows inline de data declaration. But of course, the old ABAP syntax is still working. Note that only the visibility of fields from the field catalog can be dynamically changed using the default layout interface. The field catalog interface also provides the possibility to change the header and tooltips of columns. and also to deactivate some of the standard functions for individual columns. We can specify a new title and activate the alternating row pattern using the display option interface. We can now activate and run the report. Let's select a range of business partners on the selection screen and execute the report. We can see the new title. The grid columns are no longer displayed. We can no longer aggregate the values of column cross amount because aggregations have been disabled on this column. But of course, aggregations still work on other columns such as net amount where they have not been disabled. The column web address now have a new header text and a new tooltip text, and we can see that several context menu functions have been disabled on this column. The table-like row patterns is active. Let's group the selected data by the business partner ID so we can see the constraints of the selection criteria. In the next step, we will tackle the initial grouping of the list, which represents a possibility to get rid of selection screens as static point of an application. Back in the demo report, we passed the initial grouping and sorting information using the default layout interface. I'm using the newly introduced value operator value to create tables entry in line. Having done that, we can comment the selection screen definition. The initial aggregation of fields can also be specified if required. We can deactivate some of the ELV standard functions using the standard functions interface. 
This is typically done for business authorization reasons and means that these functions are removed from the standard toolbar and also from columns context menu. The visibility of the active standard functions in the toolbar can be specified using the toolbar interface. In this example, we cannot change the visibility of aggregation functions because they have previously been set to inactive. Let's now add application-specific logic to our ELV control by enhancing the toolbar with a custom button using the toolbar interface. A function code for this new button is required. The logic behind the button is to display the details information of a selected row. We activate the single selection mode of the list and need to register an appropriate event handler to the toolbar instance. Let's implement the event handler in a local class. The static method toolbar function selected is declared as event handler for the toolbar event function selected. The handling of the custom function code is implemented. The logic can be as complex as required. Last but not least, the event handler is registered to our toolbar instance in a form routine, which is called in the demo report. Let's run again the report. Our starting point is now an initially grouped and sorted list. The inactive and invisible standard functions are no longer appearing in the toolbar. Inactive functions are also removed from the column context menus. We can now select a single row and show its detailed information by clicking on the New Detailed Toolbar button. In the last step of this demo, we will tackle the authorization checks. In the context of the classical ALV, such checks are performed in a loop over the internal table containing the selected data. With ELV on HANA, we only pass the authority instruction to the ELV interface. Let's activate and run the report. As we can see, only the authorized data are now displayed in the list. This is the end of the demo. You can check the ALV on HANA feature metrics on SCN to have a compact overview on features and their availability in SubQuery 4 windows. For more videos, guides, and tutorials about ABAP on HANA, visit our community site on SCN.